you've now seen an example of a discrete random variable and how a probability problem can be approached using a discrete random variable. At this point it's worth asking the question, why do we have random variables at all? Why not use the axioms and the theorems from chapter 2 to solve probability problems? Well the answer is when you use random variables you're forced to have real numbers and once you have real numbers then you have functions and in the case of a discrete random variable you have a probability mass function and in the case of a continuous random variable you have a probability density function and those probability mass functions and density functions can be used along with algebra and calculus to solve probability problems. It's a much more organized approach than it was in chapter 2. So let's start with probability mass functions. Let f of x be a function of x that satisfies the following. First of all, if you sum f of x over the values in the support of the random variable x, you get 1. And second of all, if you look at any x value in the support, then f of x will be greater than 0. And in fact, f of x will be 0 at all, all other points. For some set A, which is a subset of the support, whenever p of A can be expressed as p of A is the probability x is an element of A, and whenever you can sum over the set A of the probability mass function, when that is true, then you know that x is a discrete random variable and f of x will be called a probability mass function. The probability mass function determines how the probability distribution of the random variable x is distributed over the support script A. Now not everybody uses the term probability mass function. If you look at another textbook or if you look out in the literature, some will call a probability mass function a probability density function and others will call it a probability function. But these three terms are the three most likely ways to describe f of x. Here is example one. This is exactly the same example that was covered on the previous two slides. The probability mass function for x, the random variable x, which is the number of heads that appear in two tosses of a fair coin is, and over here we put the support, you can get 0, 1, or 2 heads when you toss a fair coin twice, and here we put the mass values, and according, uh, associated with 0 heads, remember we're counting the number of heads here, associated with zero heads is a probability of one-fourth. That of course corresponds to tails tails. Then associated with one head is one-half and this one-half is the sum of one-fourth and one-fourth and those are the probabilities associated with heads tails and tails heads. That's the probability of x equals one head. And finally the probability of getting exactly two heads well, there's only one way to do that, and that's heads, heads, and that occurs with probability one-fourth. Of course, all three of these probabilities assume that we have a fair coin that is being flipped. Implicit in a definition like this is that f of x is zero elsewhere. 